hello dear students so this is a video which is of a continuation of organism and the population so in the last class we have studied regarding the population density in this video we will be learning regarding the uh, growth models or we also call it as a types of uh, growth curves so growth of a population can be expressed by a mathematical expression such as a growth curve in which total number of individuals in a population is plotted against a time so there will be a two graphs which i'll be showing you in this graphs i'll try to explain you the total number of individuals in a population will be plotted against the time that means uh, the number of uh, individuals increasing in a particular area with a particular unit of time will be plotted in a graph coming to the exponential growth so there are two basic uh, growth curves which will we will be discussing in that the first one we call it as a exponential growth so here uh, when we take uh, uh, an example before starting uh, the exponential growth as in the ncrt so if you take in a reindeer experimentally reared in a natural habitat with a lot of that is plenty of food where there is no predators and it shows uh, this type of growth that means predators means if the organism increases it is a, a balance in a ecosystem or in a food chain or food web so the number of the population will decrease when it is been eaten by the predators here we are, i am telling a situation where there is no predator there is enormous food is there and plenty of food is there so the growth is more that is reproduction is more here the growth means reproduction production of the progeny in a more number the population grows exponentially until the food is engo it is available and after reaching the value the population may apparently decrease so this type of growth will show in a graph j shaped okay it may show the curve j shaped curve so that how uh, uh, will be the exponential growth so the same thing only i have given in two points with another example that is paramecium so coming to the first point so if the resource what is the resource if food and the space availability is there are the essential for the unimpeded growth population that means when there is increase in the food that means there is increase in the growth that is population growth that is reproduction is more if the resources are limited ourselves we can tell that if the resource the food availability increases poverty increases the development of the fetus also will not be there and uh, if there is uh, the population will also decrease since there is uh, no proper food so unlimited the resources are unlimited unlimited means if the amount of the food is more and more that means species have a young of food and it will go on producing the progeny that is reproduction increases the growth increases population growth intensively it increases so each species shows its full innate potential to grow in number observe this so growth means don't think a plant starts growing in this way in a height and all no we are trying to learn the population growth in this topic so, okay then the population grows in an exponential or geometric fashion which will be observed in a graph which will account in a j shape an example we have taken so this is an a medium so here whatever uh, medium this is a a growth medium which is been taken in the growth medium one paramecium has been introduced in the day zero when we come to day one it will undergo reproduction it gives rise to cr it will repeat the undergo replication the two paramecium is observed here in day two that is a four paramecium day three has it increases increases until when it increases until there is enough of food for it that is a growth medium is there so engo food resource is there the production of paramecium is more so exponential growth of paramecium shows a, a very good rate here so that is the meaning of the exponential growth so when there is resource when there is food and the space there will be more population growth 
next is here so if the population growth size is represented as n then the birth rate is represented as b death rate per capture is represented as a d then the increase or decrease in the n during a unit time period that is a t dn by dt will be written in this way that is uh, see we are accounting the increase or decrease in the population size so the, the, that is attributed in the formula that is small d small d represents what i told you uh, death rate okay and n is a population size divided by the time taken so d is a death rate of the time taken so that will be is equal to birth rate minus death rate into population size you will get uh, uh, what you will get you will get the population uh, size by the time taken so if uh, b minus d is considered as a r okay the b minus that is birth rate minus the death rate if it is considered to be r then the formula is written as dn by dt is equal to rn so okay then this uh, this how the formula is been written okay so here exponential growth where r is said to be intrinsic rate of natural resources so that what i am trying to tell has the availability of the natural resources means the food availability space availability that is habitat of an organism is an important parameter for assessing the impact of both uh, biotic and abiotic factor on a population growth that is the place or the habitat where we are living we are being influenced our growth or the production of any type of organism is dependent upon the other biotic factor around us and also a biotic factor such as light temperature or water soil so all these are also influences the growth uh, rate i mean population rate or reproduction rate on a particular uh, species so r is very important food is there only everything is there so that what we are trying to tell you in the form of a graph here so here some examples we have given here so in this example you can see the organism norway rat their value was a 0 0.015 that means a norway rat growth population uh, the rate was being caused by that of the r value the r value was 0.15 so the r value is the, the thing which tells about the natural resources that is food Okay, so the different space so the r value was 0 0.015 for so this was the reason for the population growth of the norway rat then floor beetle so the floor beetle uh, population uh, uh, the reason was that the r value was more here since the r value the intrinsic natural uh, resource uh, increases natural increase that is 0 0.12 when we consider human population in 1981 in india the other abiotic and biotic factors and the natural resources were nearly 0 0.0205 so the uh, since due to this r value only the population human population accounted to be more in uh, 1981 so this graph tells us the population growth curve that is a population density drawn against the time that a particular time taken may be in a year when we account the rate of population per area in human population also this how we account that is population density n plotted against the time taken so when we think of the exponential growth i told you as there is increase in the uh, resources the population increases and it shows the j shaped curve that is exponential growth which is the j shaped curve so the j shaped curve uh, curve on this the formula is drawn telling the death rate uh, the population uh, death rate at a time taken it will be is equal to the resources available that is r intrinsic rate so as the intrinsic rate increases the population growth also 
increases okay so the down one more graph is there that is b which represents a logistic growth which is in the sigmoid curve so this is also is explained in the form of a dn by dt is equal to rn that is again in a bracket k so k minus a minus uh, n by k so this formula i'll explain you in the next step i think so you have understood what is exponential growth okay so exponential growth r becomes a uh, intrinsic rate of the natural resources which is in increasing so as there is availability of food and space naturally the growth population growth rate also increases Okay, next see you can see the exponential growth is being derived with a formula that is integral form of a exponential growth equation so what is the integral form of the exponential growth the equation is nt nt already we have studied that is population density after the time t then n is will be is equal to n0 n0 means population density at a time 0 this is a density after the time availability and after the time availability then the uh, density time becomes zero here we account for the increase intrinsic rate of the natural increases with the base of a natural logarithm which uh, which is of how much 2.71828 yeah so this is regarding the formula integral formula of the exponential growth equation by this we can find out the population density after the time taken so next is that there is no proper logistic growth now coming to the logistic growth here very easy to understand yeah the logistic growth means see it is in a uh, yes the shape so whenever we refer the egg s uh, uh, sigmoid curve as such say i'll draw and show you if this is the s shaped curve yeah something like this so this is uh, we will take uh, uh, any resources or a uh, growth if you consider a plant growth and if the seed is or here the starting it is called as a lag phase okay i'll write l a g that is growth rate is less at the starting immediately there is a increase in the growth phase which we call it as log phase Then after reaching uh, nearly an increase in the growth uh, rate, immediately it stops here, which we call it as study phase. So this uh, type of uh, uh, growth, we call it as it stops. So it is known as a uh, study phase. So this type of growth, uh, we call it as to be the sigmoid curve or the logistic growth curve. So it is shown here, you can see here. So here that is what is explained again first thing you understand in the logistic growth first the growth will be lagging which will be very less immediately there will be an increase in the growth rate which we call it as log phase after reaching the certain uh, population growth immediately availability of the resources it becomes limited the population growth stops so that time we call it a steady phase so which will get appeared in the form of s shape so we call it as a sigmoid curve or s shaped curve so let us get into the point there is no population in nature having unlimited resources for exponential growth understand this that what i am trying to tell in the exponential growth as there is a availability of food and space there is increase in the reproduction so there is no population in nature having limited resources for the exponential growth but this leads to the competition among the uh, individuals for when it becomes limited source at this time eventually we remember uh, Darwin that is survival the fittest and struggle of existence so one which individual uh, fights uh, for its uh, food and the space and uh, it gets survived it will start reproducing its growth increases that what we understand in logistic growth okay 
so in nature a given habitat as ingo resources to support a maximum possible number so anything we read we come to a only conclusion if there is increase in the food and the space there is increase in the population increase in the individuals increase in the number of the uh, reproduction number if the proper uh, food availability resources availability get limited population drops back and that also we call it as, as a population crash but that is not given in your book so we are trying to understand what is the reason for the increase in the growth uh, rate that is growth of the population so beyond which there is no further growth is possible it is called as carrying capacity represented as See, in this uh, limited, this line indicates what? This line indicates there is no increasing in the, there is no what? There is no increasing in the population rate because the source become limited which is represented by this line. So, this line is said to be K. So, inside this line only, sigmoid curve is drawn, which we are trying to understand. The growth rate at starting, it is lagging, then it increases, then after to an air, uh, so resources becomes limited. So, resource become limited means the growth will not increase, which we call it as a, a K. So, this is a line which represents a K. So, that's why we draw the formula dn by dt is equal to rn by k minus n divided by the k. So, here the dn by dt is a rate of the change in the population size. What is dn by dt? Once again, I am telling the rate of change in the population size. n is said to be r is the intrinsic rate of natural resources. n is you know already population size. So, there the K is a carrying capacity. So, here we represent K minus that is carrying capacity minus the uh, population size divided by the uh, limited uh, resources uh, that is the stop of the uh, population growth rate divided by K. You get only uh, what you get n by 1 minus n by k also which is we call it as environmental resistance so this is said to be the environmental resistance which is crossed against the rare uh, change in the population uh, size so dt by d, d dn by dt represent what rate of change in the population size when does it size uh, changes when the uh, growth is uh, stops here K tells there won't be any maximum possible growth if the sources becomes limited. As the sources become limited, the growth that is reproduction is limited. So, that what we call it as the change in the population size is equal to the intrinsic value and the population density by the carrying capacity K minus N population size. Okay, So, it is drawn against the time. The next is the logistic growth. So, that what I have explained regarding the sigmoid curve here. So, a population with the limited resources shows initially first lag phase. Then the phase of acceleration means I said you know that is log phase. There is a, a steadily increase in the uh, population. Okay then declaration then immediately when the resources is uh, emptied or uh, resources becomes less immediately there will be declaration means stop of the population and finally uh, it stop a symptom tone means it stop this type of population growth is called as world, uh, world set per logistic growth so world set per logistic growth means it tries to tell when the resources is limited so yeah, there the uh, the growth population growth also will become limited at a particular time taken which we call it as a logistic growth represented in the form of a s in the graph so here you can see it is in the form of a s curve okay so it is in the form of a s curve so which represents the uh, lim uh, sig sigmoid curving
So I have explained regarding the logistic growth in last slide only. This logistic growth we call it as a, this formula to be as a world set per logistic growth which is described in this formula as I told you dn by dt. So dn by dt represent the change in the uh, uh, population uh, size. I mean the rate of change in the population size is said to be dn by dt n is a population density at the time r is the intrinsic rate of the natural k is a carrying capacity so carrying capacity means i have already told you so the limited uh, growth uh, line it is so here from upon this there won't be increase in the logistic growth here the growth stops here why it stops means because of the limited source as there is a source there is a increasing in the growth once the uh, source becomes uh, emptied or a uh, food is been uh, over immediately what happened reproduction rate decreases that what i told you declaration acceleration and declaration which also I explained in the form of lag log and a study phase so this is actually the correct uh, statistics of a population rate in a particular habitat. So always the re uh, resource won't be there. Always food availability will not be there. So as there is a food availability goes on by increasing by the population, one day, I mean, then the population will start, uh, I mean, uh, increases, increases. Now, naturally, the food availability will start decreases. And once the food availability complete decreases, there will be decline in the population. So, for most of animal population, resources for growth are limited. So, that uh, the logistic growth model is said to be one of the realistic growth model i think so you have understood both so both means uh, one is exponential growth rate which tells there is always the resources that is food and space availability is there so the growth rate is uh, emerges in the j shape so but here in the logistic growth rate we are trying to tell there is a limited source the population uh, increases until there is a food uh, once the food is uh, getting to be emitted the growth rate uh, declines or it stops so that is the main difference between the exponential growth and the logistic growth i think so both the growth you have understood till now. so this is how you will draw the graph if it is asked in the examination and describe regarding this okay next topic is the life history variation so what is life history variation means here uh, life history it shows they have developed an efficient reproductive strategy and they are fit to live that is according to darwin i told you know if they are strong enough uh, in the availability of the resources they undergo the competition and if they are able to survive they become survival the fittest because before they become the survival the fittest they'll become uh, they have to undergo struggle of existence so once the struggle of uh, existence they come out of that then of course they become the naturally selected and they are survival the fittest of that habitat so that what we study in the life history variation so here yeah, population evolve to maximum their reproductive fitness or darwin's fitness so here uh, fitness means uh, high should be the uh, intrinsic uh, i mean it should go on increasing in the intrinsic rate of the natural resources under a particular set of selection pressures organism evolved towards the most efficient reproductive strategy then second point some organism breed only once in their lifetime like uh, bamboo okay they breed only once in their lifetime like the uh, pacific salmon fishes and bamboo so this is the salmon fishes and bamboo which breed once in their life while the others breed many times most of the birds and the mammals you know they all uh, uh, although they are also the mammals means a primate so they follow uh, they will uh, survive in the living habitat and they go on breeding throughout many times they breed so some produces a large number of small sized offspring such as oyster pelagic fishes while the other produces a small number of large sized offspring 
such as birds and the mammals. So there is a differentiation in the reproduction or a difference in the uh, population of the uh, species here. So here we are trying to tell here uh, two difference we have notified that is some organism breed only once in their lifetime and uh, second one they, some organism breed many times in their lifetime. Then the third point what we studied, some produces a large number of small sized offspring. Okay, they produce what? What is the important point we should uh, remember? Some produce small sized offspring, while the other produce a small number of large sized offspring. So that is the difference. So some produce large number of small sized offspring. Some will produce small number of a large sized offspring example birds and mammals <coughs> these facts indicate that life history trait of an organism have evolved due to limited abiotic and biotic components of that habitat that means if in an ecosystem an organism a species is surviving it has to be get adjusted with the other biotic factor other species biotic factor means other type of organism so then only it becomes a, a complete ecosystem no organism can live alone right no organism or a species can exist alone it needs a interaction in an ecosystem so it has to have a world uh, it has to face all these uh, uh, problems with the limited abiotic factors that is non-living factors such as water soil light temperature and biotic factor means other organism with it right so this how we call it as Comp uh, these are the components of the habitat so where in a group of species or the same type of species have to face all these uh, uh, triads and uh, they have to get evolved in the uh, next is population interaction under the la, what it, uh, what i explained life history variation the next topic under that is population interaction so in population interaction organism interact in a various way to form a biological community the interaction between two species is called as interspecific interaction they include see all these six types of important so, which are the six types of population interaction means one is yeah, one is mutualism competition predation parasitism so mutualism this is a example we have shown that is uh, lichens growing on a tree so where there is a mutual uh, benefit for the both then competition here you can say so here the uh, animals are running behind the predators uh, i mean sorry uh, here the animals are fighting for an uh, uh, food so where the uh, which one or organism gets its food comfortably will survive with the food and the space that what we knew regarding the competition predation predation means a prey so here you can see lion jumping on a uh, bull i think so bull so for the food so that what we call it as predator so here bull is said to be the buffalo or the bull it is said to be the prey and lion is a predator so that the process we call it as predation the fourth is parasitism coming to the parasitism here the fourth you can see the organism is uh, landed over another uh, organism like a caterpillar worm where it will draw the complete nutrition of this organism for its uh, survivability which we call it as parasites and the process we call it as parasitism then commensalism see here the commensalism also it's an uh, example where we tell one is benefited another one is not benefited Okay. The amensalism, both are together, but no one is armed. So that is amensalism. So coming to the population interaction, here name of interaction, mutualism. So here both the species are benefited. So we are uh, in a two interaction between the two species. In this uh, table, we have considered species A and species B. 
so both are benefited both are in a positive ranking in the competition both species are armed if they fight for the uh, limited natural resources both are at attention so both are said to be in a uh, negative that is uh, interaction is negative then predation one is predator will be benefited with the food other prey is armed so species a is be benefited means species b is uh, harmed here then parasitism one parasite will be benefited the other host will be completely armed so b species will be armed a species is benefited for example uh, when we tell uh, uh, parasitism uh, there are so many organisms uh, can be given as a example uh, that is uh, uh, lice uh, on our head can be one of the example where it will draw the uh, blood of the skull and it will increase in its population but the, our head uh, we become the host here we uh, we get irritated uh, allergic to that uh, and the, there is loss of blood so we become the host means we are at the negative rating and the benefited organism lies becomes in a positive in commensalism as i said you one is benefited other is nor benefited nor uh, harmed it is so it is zero rating here commensalism one is harm other is unaffected so one is in a negative radiation other one is nor affected nothing happens so, so that is amensalism so in predation parasitism commensalism the interacting species live closely together whatever the interaction may be between the two organism among this interaction all the organism uh, will uh, get existed i mean existed or killed also it takes place uh, with a closely uh, relation next the first one we'll study regarding the predation so here you can see herbivores are the prey and carnivores are the predators so this organism are dependent on this organism for the food okay so in a broad ecological contest all carnivores herbivores etc are predators about 25% insects are the phytophagous if the predator over exploits its prey then the prey might become extinct of course so if a box of chocolate is given to you Uh, to maintain it for one month, you go on eating in a day. Will there will be chocolate in your box in the next day? It will get emptied. That's what happens. So, if there is availability of the that uh, organism, the predator goes on eating means it is over exploitation. And finally, what happens? It will not have that prey. Uh, again to eat so it becomes extinct means no more it will be there no more availability of that prey will be seen it results in the extinction of the predator therefore both will be affected therefore predator in nature are called as a prudent if the food is not available even the predator will die so it has to get balanced means over exploitation of the prey shouldn't be done Okay. Next is the importance of the predator. The first point: predators control prey population. Of course, when certain exotic species are introduced in a geographical area, they spread fast due to the absence of its natural predator. See, uh, somebody is not using that organism, means it will grow uh, massively. If, for example, uh, Uh, parthenium will take as an example parthenium when it is introduced in india it was not been used by anybody nor it was been destroyed by any organism nor it became food for any organism so it is growing widely 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 over the geographical area so then uh, what happened then it spread fast due to the absence of the natural predators in the invaded land so there is no other organism to kill that means that type of uh, uh, organism goes on 
existing in enormous amount. So example here uh, we have given in the picture prickly pear cactus. So this prickly pear cactus was been introduced in Australia in 1920s which caused havoc by spreading means it is not an uh, is it a very good plant which is needed for the environment nobody uses not any organism uses because it has a uh, prickly pear cactus no organism moves to it so it started spreading havoc means in a greater rate which is not later like the weed we can say later it was controlled by they found uh, the thing to control this cactus so that was introducing the cactus feeding predator was introduced to kill or the decrease the ratio of the cactus they introduce cactus feeding predator moth so as soon as this predator moth was introduced the population rate of the uh, cactus decreased okay so this is how you control the uh, predators control the prey population. Okay, next second one is predator are used in the biological control methods. Of course, they are used in the biological control methods. Usually, when we talk in the uh, agriculture, uh, agriculture. Uh, scientific method also the biological controlling methods means we use most of the predators to kill the uh, insects so predators maintain a species diversity in a community of course if the there are no eaters i told you know for example if the grass so grasshopper uh, population goes on increasing also it is very dangerous so this grasshoppers will be eaten by uh, uh, the frogs, uh, snakes, uh, okay. So, all these uh, organisms we call them as what predators. So, these predators will maintain the species diversity and also maintain the population of that uh, organism, prey organism, by reducing competition among the prey species. Example also, I told an example here, another example is given. The predator that is starfish piaster is the rocky intertidal communities of the american specific coast in an experiment they observed all the starfishes were removed from an enclosed intertidal area it caused extinction of over 10 invertebrate species within a year due to the interspecific competition see so when this uh, piaster was been uh, removed the other uh, 10 uh, invertebrate species were being distinct uh, extinct means they were not to be seen only they completely they were being killed so that what happens if we don't uh, uh, have the predator so there should be uh, the predators uh, to control the prey so in predation next point is defense of the prey species to lessen impact of the predation former foliage former foliage means change in coloration cryptic coloration means what change in coloration some insects and frogs frogs also they change their color so that they escape from the predators some are poisonous also in this the next is monarch butterfly is highly distasteful to its predator bird so it is uh, due to a special chemical in its body it is acquired during its uh, caterpillar stage by feeding on a poisonous weed itself oh my god see this is leaf insect i think so you have all seen leaf insect this is camouflage uh, uh, frog so this is the frog here can you identify see it is just uh, appearing like a leaf so camouflage frog means frog will get colorized itself wherever it lands like a chameleon we talk no like that so that it escapes itself from the uh, predator and but some are really poisonous they are dangerous so in the same way here also this is monarch butterfly these butterflies are really distasteful for the predator birds so as they are distasteful 
it is uh, why means uh, because the, why they make themselves a distasteful means they want to escape from the predator so what they do they uh, at the caterpillar stage they feed on a poisonous weed means uh, they feed on a poisonous uh, uh, leaf grass and leaf may be something uh, weed may means a plant so they feed on that such a plant as they feed if these are eaten by any other insects they will get vomited only by because the such uh, monarch butterfly will just escape from the predators by uh, they cannot taste it if it is a distasteful who will eat it so they are they will be escaped from the uh, predator birds and also predator uh, other organisms so monarch butterfly are uh, very intelligent uh, butterfly no how they they produce a chemical in its body which make them itself distasteful because they are so intelligent at the stage uh, of a caterpillar they will feed the poisonous weed after they become butterfly they will not feed because they will die so they have a digesting capacity at that stage when they eat it off and when they become a butterfly that time if they are consumed by any other organism the bird the one if it eats it feels distasteful and rest of the other population will not be touched only in this way they protect themselves from the predator so this we call it as a defense mechanism of a prey species from the predator so which are the two types I mean one is comophily change in color another one is this is an example that is monarch butterfly okay so the next is a uh, uh, thorns it is also comes under the defense mechanism of a spray i mean prey species how they uh, i mean protect themselves from uh, escaping themselves from the predators thorns so here most common morphological means of defense plants is acacia uh, cactus etc many plants produce chemicals that make the herbivora sick Uh, see such uh, plants are very intelligent plants these are so calotropis may be thorns uh, acacia may be cactus may be this all will produce a lactis if it is eaten by the uh, insects or uh, any other organism if it feeds that immediately either it will become sick or uh, digestion problem will occur or it will disturb its reproduction or it will be killed only Yeah, it is so very poisonous latex it produces even thorns will get uh, uh, perched over their body so in this way uh, they get uh, most of the plants they protect themselves from the predators then example as i told you calotropis it produces a cardiac uh, glycoside so cattle or goats uh, do not eat it then nicotine caffeine quinine cysteine opium this all are drug producing plants are also saved from the predators so etc these are are the defense against the grazers and the browsers that is usually sheep sheep might be goat might be which all come for grazing they will not eat such plants nor they will go near it why they will not go because it either it will kill them or it will cause harm to them so this how this plants protect themselves from the predators so this is the defense mechanism where i have explained both the plants and also animals how they safeguard themselves from the predators so that's all for today's class the next interactions i will teach you in the next video children thank you